John Luke Robertson was just 16 years old when A&E launched the show Duck Dynasty. That means the eldest son of Willie and Corey had to grow up on national television. We've seen him get married and go off to college now, and now he wants to show us who he really is. You would think that this beardless member of the famous Duck Dynasty clan would follow in his family's footsteps. John Luke and Mary Kay are going to be heading off to college soon. So Cy and I decided to come over and help them pack. What is that thing behind you? It's a paddle board. What's it good for? That defines who he is. This is who I am. No. Yeah. No. John Luke Robertson, the oldest son of Willie and Corey Robertson, headed off to college to figure out his own dreams and goals. In his book, Young and Beardless, he shares wild stories of the Robertson escapades and how lessons from home set him on the right path toward dominating his future. John Luke Robertson is here with us now. His new book is called Young and Beardless. It's in stores right now. And also, you know, John, you talk about John Luke, I'm sorry. Um, in your book, you talk about expect the unexpected. Well, we didn't know your lovely wife was coming, Mary Kate. <laughs> so you you live by what you talk about. So welcome to both of you, Mary Kate and John Luke. Yeah. Now we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this baby face because I was just at um, Liberty University mm -hmm. for their commencement a couple weeks ago. Your dad was there, Willie right. was there, and he was talking about his monster manly beard and how mm -hmm. much better it is than these little short cropped, you know, hipster beards right now. You have zero beard. Right. You're brave. You're brave to be in your family. I mean, how, aren't they, they don't force you to do it? Well, I wouldn't call it bravery <laughs> as much as uh, genetics. <laughs> uh, I can grow little scraggly pieces, right. but my face just hasn't gotten with the program yet for the I full see. beard. Okay, so yeah. you're not totally opposed. I'm it's not, not that you're opposed. opposed. It's, it's just you're my, waiting. My you know. face is opposed <laughs> to growing it. I guess I can... I'm just now getting a little, kind of, sort of a little beard, but okay. well, it's not worth growing out. Well, both of you are students at Liberty University right, right now. You got married last June, so you've been married already a year. You're both mm -hmm. 20. Right. Um, what's it like going to school, being married? I mean, because all your friends are probably, you know, they're dating and they're looking right. for people to date, and, and you guys are already, mm -hmm. you know, setting up a home there. What's that like, um, Mary Kate? I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I went to one semester of college not married, and then I've had a year down married, and I mean, I think we've had a really good time. And we, we don't like seclude ourselves. Like we're not just like this married couple that doesn't really do anything with anyone else. Like we have people over to our house all the time, so it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you guys met at summer camp. Um, you were both 16. And I know in your book you talk about you're a big proponent of summer camp. You right. say don't miss summer camp. No, I love you it. know I I feel the same way about summer camp. That's where I first met Jesus. You know yeah. when oh. uh, when I was about 12. But um, oh. so tell me about how you guys met. I mean, how did you? You know, you're 16. You're at summer camp, and you just saw her across the room, or what happened? We were put on the same team during this competition, and that's really how we started talking. But it was, and then we just met each other. I had a crush on her. I thought she liked me. She says she didn't. I don't believe her. And then we, summer camp ended, and we went to different schools. And then a year later, she transferred to the high school that I went to. Really? And we had assigned seats next to each other in chemistry class. And that was it. A year later, we started dating, and about a year later, I proposed. Wow, so you guys, you guys are like an old married couple then. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've yeah, been basically, basically been together, you know, for like four years now, right? Pretty much. Um, a lot of people, though, say it's too young. What do you say to the people out there who say, you know, you haven't lived yet, you know, you need to get out and live? What do you say? Well, I think well, one thing about going to college married, all our friends are single, and they're like looking for dates and trying to get mm -hmm. together. And I look at that, and I remember that time, and I think, I am so glad that I'm married now. <laughs> it is way more fun to be married. You, yeah. It's way more fun to be married. Mm -hmm. You definitely won your prize. Well, I, and also down in, in the South, I mean, it's still, it's pretty common to get married young, you know, um, and it's actually becoming more in vogue now. I think, you know, you don't have, it's just, you know. Yeah. Now, now, when Duck Dynasty first kicked off, you were 16, you were in high school, so you basically grew up on national TV. I mean, was right. that like so weird or was it cool? It was. Uh, it was so gradual. Most people don't know, but we had a show before Duck Dynasty really? on the Outdoor Channel. I did not know this. And it okay. was just Duck Commander, and it was so it was just the men duck hunting. 
pretty much. And no one else, I mean, I was on it a little bit. And even before that, we had DVDs from Duck Hunting. So growing up, I spent my entire life on and off, like around cameras, and then the show on Outdoor Channel, which like I said, most people don't know about, and it became the number one show on Outdoor Channel. Then it was two years after that when Duck Dynasty hit. Right. So uh, it wasn't so, I wouldn't say it was so strange because it didn't all hit at once. It was mm. kind of a gradual Did process. Did you ever in a million years think it would be such a phenomenon? Never, never. Wow. Looking back, I see that God was preparing the whole family mm. for it. But at the time, no, we never could have imagined. Mary Kate, what, uh, what's it been like for you kind of infiltrating into this Duck Dynasty world? Yeah, um, it's been interesting because, I mean, for me, it wasn't gradual at all. It was very much like... Sink or swim. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but um, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. We have like a neat opportunity and platform to like share the gospel and talk about God. So what are you guys majoring in? I am majoring in... <laughs> oh dear, this is going to be good. Camp, outdoor, and adventure leadership. Yes, I love it. <laughs> it's oh my goodness. It's pretty much how to run a summer camp. I love it that much. You love it that much. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Well, Virginia is a great place to do that because we have mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of great mountains here. What about you, Mary Kate? What? I'm in women's leadership. Fantastic. So it's like women's ministry. Mm -hmm. Then you can have, you know, the women, you can lead the women at summer camp. Yeah. That sounds perfect. Um, in your book, John, like you talk about that you're still trying to figure out your life, but mm -hmm. it seems to me you've got to pretty figure it out. I mean, you're married, you're a college student, you already started some businesses, you've got your first book out, you're 20 years old, you're making the rest of us feel kind of bad, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm going to ask this to Mary Kate. Okay. You know, he says he's still trying to figure himself out. What would you say, how would you answer that question for him? Has he figured mm. it out? Is he still in the process? He, John Link is very, I think he's very smart and he knows a lot and he's always though like no matter how much like that I think he knows, like he's always wanting to learn more and like he's always reading books and he's always wanting to like be better and like know more and like I love that about him and I love watching him dig deeper into things and try to just figure things out. Well, <clears throat> we're very familiar with um, Phil and Kay, uh, your grandparents, but there's a story in your book about the grandfather on your mother's side and you call him Two Papa? Two Papa. Yeah, yeah. Two Papa. Um, and it, it involves some sand dollars. Tell me about that. He, that was when he was deciding, so my great grandfather on my mother's side he started a publishing company. Called Howard Publishing. Howard Publishing, correct. And it um, was doing really great. And then years later, Two Papa um, was, was now the CEO of it, and he had to make a decision whether to sell it or not. And he was walking on the beach and he prayed to God. Uh, he said, Father, if I need to sell it, like, you just got to tell me. He said, I want to keep it, but if I need to sell it, let me know and let me find a sand dollar. And immediately after he prayed that prayer, he looked down and he picked up a sand dollar. And in the book, it says there wasn't just one, it was a bag yeah, yeah, of sand it was dollars. A, yeah, a whole lot of them, a whole bag. He, he had a whole bag full. And, and he, he sold, sold it. it. And right. then that building became the Duck Dynasty warehouse, and right? That, and now that, yeah. And, and so, now it was actually, there were two buildings. One became the youth ministry building for the church we go to. And then the other building became where Duck Dynasty is, where Duck Commander is. Well, I got to tell you, you might be 20, but I couldn't put this down last night. There is a lot of great wisdom in here for any age, young and old. You need to get a copy of John Luke's new book, Young and Beardless. I love the name. Um, it's uh, available wherever books are sold nationwide. John Luke, Mary Kate, thanks so much for being with Thank us. You. you guys are Thank delightful. You so cute.